we now learn how to find the distance of a point from a plane. And to do that, we're going to work through the example that we see here. We're given a point P with coordinates 4, negative 1, 8, as well as a plane, which I've called pi, whose Cartesian equation is 2x minus y plus 3z, and that equals to 5. On the right-hand side of the screen, I've illustrated this example. We can see that I have the point P, which is right here, as well as the plane pi right here. And what we need to find is the distance from this point P to this plane. And here's the idea. The distance of P from this plane is equal to the distance from the point P to its perpendicular projection, which I'll go ahead and call Q, on that plane. Now, because point Q is the perpendicular projection of point P onto this plane, this line segment QP, or PQ, is perpendicular to this plane. And to illustrate that further, I'll draw a normal to the plane, which I'm drawing right now in pink, and I'll call that normal n. And I'll go ahead and draw a little right angle there. So to be clear, the distance of point P from the plane can be thought of as the length of this line segment PQ. And to find its length, we need to find the coordinates of this point Q on the plane. In turn, to find the coordinates of point Q, the approach is to find the coordinates of the point of intersection of the line that passes through the points P and Q, which I'm drawing right now in gray. So the whole approach that we're going to follow here can be summarized in three steps. The first step is going to be to find the equation of the line passing through the points P and Q. Once that's done, we'll move on to the second step, in which we'll actually find the coordinates of the point of intersection of that line with the plane, that point being point Q. Finally, once we have the coordinates of point Q, we'll move on to the third step, which will be to calculate the length of the line segment PQ, which will equal to the magnitude of the vector PQ. So let's get started. The first step was to find the equation of the line passing through the points P and Q. Now remember, in vector form, a line has an equation R, which equals to a vector A, plus some parameter, which I'll call a lambda, times a vector U where a is the position vector of any point that the line passes through, and u is a direction vector for the line. Well, let's see. We know that our line passes through the point p. So for our position vector a, we can go ahead and state that a equals to the position vector of point p, so that would be op, and that's equal to the vector 4, negative 1, 8. Next, for our direction vector u, well, since we know that the line is perpendicular to the plane, or normal to the plane, we can go ahead and use a normal to the plane as our direction vector. And perhaps the easiest way to find a normal to a plane is to use the coefficients of its Cartesian equation. In other words, we can define a normal to this plane using the coefficients 2, negative 1, and 3. In other words, since a normal to the plane could be 2, negative 1, 3, we can go ahead and state that our direction vector u equals to the normal to the plane. In other words, u is equal to the vector 2, negative 1, 3. And so the line that we're after has equation x, y, z, and that equals to 4, negative 1, 8, plus lambda times 2, negative 1, 3. And that's our first step done. We now have the equation of the line passing through points P and Q. Now that that's done, we move on to step two. And in step two, remember, we need to find the actual coordinates of point Q. And point Q is the point of intersection of the line that we just found with our plane, pi. Now to find the point of intersection of the line and the plane, it's best to rewrite the line equation that we have here in its parametric form. That leads us to three equations, the first being x equals to 4 plus 2 lambda, the second y equals to negative 1 minus lambda, and the third would be z equals to 8 plus 3 lambda. So let's go ahead and quickly write those. The parametric equations are x equals to 4 plus 2 lambda, y equals to negative 1 minus lambda, and z equals to 8 plus 3 lambda. Done. Now that that's done, we rewrite the equation we have for our plane, replacing x, y, and z by the expressions we have in our parametric equations. 
Here's what I mean. The equation of the plane was 2x minus y plus 3z equals to 5. And so if we replace x by 4 plus 2 lambda, as well as y by negative 1 minus lambda, and finally z by 8 plus 3 lambda, we'll obtain an equation for lambda, which will correspond to the value of lambda at the point Q, that is, the point of intersection. So let's go ahead, I'll put a little asterisk here to follow the working, and I'll do that up here. Our plane's equation becomes 2 times 4 plus 2 lambda, minus, in parentheses, negative 1 minus lambda, plus 3 times 8 plus 3 lambda, and that all equals to 5. To be clear, this 4 plus 2 lambda is our x, negative 1 minus lambda is the expression we have for y, and 8 plus 3 lambda is the expression we have for z. We now open up each of these parentheses, which leads us to 8 plus 4 lambda, plus 1 plus lambda, plus 24 plus 9 lambda equals to 5. Gathering like terms, we have 4 lambda plus lambda plus 9 lambda, so that's 14 lambda, plus 8 plus 1 plus 24, which is 33, and that equals to 5. Carrying on, that leads us to 14 lambda equals to negative 28. And finally, solving for lambda, we obtain lambda equals to negative 2. So the value of lambda at the point Q is negative 2. In other words, if we replace lambda inside our line equation by negative 2, we'll obtain the position vector of the point of intersection of the line and the plane, Q. So let's go ahead and do that. Using the vector form of our line equation and replacing lambda by negative 2, we obtain the position vector of point Q, so that's O, Q, and that's equal to 4, negative 1, 8, minus 2, times 2, negative 1, 3. That's equal to 4, negative 1, 8, minus 4, negative 2, 6. And by all means check, but that leads to O, Q, equals to 0, 1, 2. And we now have the position vector of the point Q. And we can even state its coordinates. Q has coordinates 0, 1, 2. And that's our second step done. We now move on to the third and final step in which we actually calculate the length PQ or QP. Now to calculate that length, we can think of it as being the magnitude of the vector PQ. So let's start by finding the vector PQ. Well, PQ equals to the position vector of Q minus the position vector of P. And we have both of those position vectors. Indeed, OQ is right here, and OP we defined at the very beginning here. That's the vector we have here in green. So using those two vectors, we can state that PQ equals to OQ, which was 0, 1, 2, minus OP, which was 4, negative 1, 8. That leads us to PQ equals to the vector negative 4, 2, negative 6. Finally, using the fact that the distance from the point P to the plane is equal to the length of the line segment PQ, which equals to the magnitude of vector PQ, we calculate the magnitude of PQ, which equals to the square root of negative 4 squared, so that's 16, plus 2 squared, so that's 4, plus negative 6 squared, which is 36. And that leads us to the magnitude of vector PQ is equal to the square root of 16 plus 4 plus 36, which is 56. And that's the answer. Now, if needs be, using a calculator and rounding to three significant figures, we find that's equal to 7.48. And that would be 7.48 units of length. And that's the distance of this point P from this plane. And there we have it. We now know how to calculate the distance of a point from a plane. And the three steps we've just seen will always work. Remember, first step, we found the equation of the line passing through the point that we were given, as well as its perpendicular projection onto the plane that we called Q. 
In the second step, step two, we found the coordinates of the point of intersection of the line with the plane, and that's what we found here, point Q. Finally, in the third step, we actually calculated the distance, and that was equal to the magnitude of the vector PQ. Do make a note of these three steps, as they will no doubt come in handy when studying 3D lines and planes and their intersections. And there we have it, everyone. That's it for this tutorial.